Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today I'm going to wor be working in my art journal. And I'm doing something that I saw um, suggested on several different YouTube channels, where they do something called inclusions. And inclusions are where you put like a tag or another page or a shape or something and incorporate it into your journal. Now, I saw a lot of them put them right into the seam and uh, they would flip back and forth, but I really don't have a seam on this one because um, I have a spiral bound. So I thought I'd do attach two pieces of cardstock that I just cut wavy cur curves into on either side, sort of like wings. And uh, I just fastened these in with a piece of masking tape on both sides. And I've just it over the pages and I've just it over these. And this is going to add a little bit of an interactive element to my spread. Now, what am I going to do with this spread? Not really sure. I think I'm going to lay down a background first from these papers. These papers came from uh, uh, Tim Holt's collection, actually. I think it's the Dapper uh, collection. Could be wrong. It may not be the Dapper, but whatever. But um, I like the vintage look. Actually, this is the side that I want to use. So some of the elements of those. I was going to use this side, but I might use that side. Well, we'll see, or maybe I'll use both. And then I've printed out some various papers from uh, Mike Deacon's Digital Downloads. And I think I'm going to do this. I, I went through my paper dolls from Tim Holtz. And uh, I did some scanning and cutting. And I've got a lot of pairs, uh, like kids together uh, with each other. So I think I'm going to do a whole thing with uh, paired up people. I've got some butterflies. I've got some flowers from that collection. I have way more than I need here, but I like to have a variety. So I've got all of those. And by the way, um, if you want to see how I make multiple copies of uh, the these things that come commercially bought, but you want to extend them, you want to make the size bigger or something like that, check out my video on using your Cricut to print and cut JPEGs. And it explains it all in there for you how to do that. I've also pulled out some doilies. Um, don't know if I'll use them or not, but I saw them in my stash and thought, what the heck? And I printed out, I saw somebody using uh, paper, uh, we call it measuring tape. And I didn't have paper measuring tape, but in that same collection of papers, I found a sheet that had all these different like rulers on them. So I've cut those all out. Again, I might use these, I might not use them. This page, I don't have much more of a plan than what I've just explained to you. So we'll see how this all works out. Um, I will fast forward parts of this through because, hey, it's nothing more boring than watching uh, blue or paint dry. So I'm going to get started, first of all, um, with laying down a background. And I think I'm going to do the background with pieces of these papers uh, torn up. And I'm just going to put them randomly. I am going to use the other side of this around. And right now I'm just tearing up. I'm not really putting a lot of thought into this. I'm just ripping up the pieces. right now and we'll see where I'm going to glue them down. Now what I'll probably do is to unify the coloring on all of these. I will probably go over it with uh, some kind of a, a wash. Um, I don't know if I'll use white or I'll use something else, but that's what I'm thinking right now. Now this page is probably going to take me hmm, several hours to do, but I won't make the video several hours long because you do not want to sit through all of that. So I'm just tearing, I'm tearing off the white edges on some of these because I don't want those white edges, but I do want the, the ripped edges. I might even add to this some of the Tim Holtz tissue. I do have some of that. So let me just pull that out. Uh, 
I like using the tissue because um, you can see through it. Adds a nice uh, level of transparency. It also can add a little texture because stuff gets a little wrinkly when you uh, add the matte medium to it. And I'm okay with that. All right, I've got a big pile here. So I'm just going to scoop these off. And I'm just going to start gluing them down. Now, start on one page. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. Keep part of the shot, but I want some area here to uh, put my glue on. I'm just using ordinary matte gel, medium. You could use a glue stick, too. For this. Um, the reason I don't usually use a glue stick is I find that the glue stick does not really, um, when you're doing something that's a whole background, I find it, it, it doesn't really stick down that well. Actually, I want that straight edge up there. Anything that goes over the edges, I will uh, trim off once it's dry. And because I've got this over top of my hinge piece, um, I'll just, as I'm gluing things down, I'll probably make a little bit of a, I'll take my bone folder and uh, go along the gutter of this just to make sure this folds in okay. And I'm not really thinking very hard about where these pieces are going. Just getting them down. This is one of the parts about collaging that I really like because really you don't have to think about what you're doing. And as such, I find it kind of relaxing. You'll notice I'm putting glue on both the page and I'm putting it on the back of the pieces that I'm gluing down. This just helps to keep your wrinkles down to a minimum, but as I said, I'm not worried about the wrinkles because they add texture. Let's get some of the tissue down. And you see, when you put the matte medium on the tissue, it becomes a little bit more transparent, which I like. Okay, so I'm going to go on and uh, finish all of this, laying it down, and then I'm going to dry it, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've got all of my background pieces on, and I've got them on the... Uh, inclusions as well on the flaps and it's all pretty much dry and I added a couple of, uh, of these doilies a gold one and a white one but now I want to uniform the color and I've been debating on what color to use but I think what I'm going to do and this is an experiment I'm going to take the Vicky Booten uh, gold glaze and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of glazing medium so I'm going to create a light gold glaze that I'm going to put over this to unify the color at least that's my theory, but we'll see here. So I'm going to put some glaze out on my craft mat. And I'm going to add a little glaze. And I'm not sure how much of this I should add, but we'll see here. So 
So I want this to be fairly transparent. And I don't know if this is the way to do it or not. I think we need a lot more glaze. If anything, it is making this runny, but I'm not sure if it's making my color any more transparent. So what I might do is just put it on one test spot area first. And I could probably take a baby wipe to it as well, if it gets a little heavy in one area. So let's see, let me grab some baby wipes here, and let's pick up a little bit on our brush. Just try one spot. Oh yeah, this is going to work. It'll just sort of anti. I've got more glaze here though than I need. Oops, got a little on my another page here. I'll have to wipe that off. Now, I could have done this with a, a goldy paint as well, but I thought, well, I've got this stuff. Let's give it a shot and see what it will do when you use it this way. It, it in itself is called a glaze, so maybe I didn't even have to add any of the glaze medium to it. But actually, I think the glaze medium has thinned it down a little bit. I could have used water. But the problem with using water in something like this is that it could break down the um, adhesive qualities of it if you use too much. Whereas this, I think the glazing medium has some adhesive qualities to it, so it's not going to really break it down. Yeah, I do like how this is sort of, I'm sorry I'm off screen here. I do like though how it's sort of uh, tying everything together. And I think this will dry fairly fast. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with my heat gun and I'm going to do the other side, um, the flaps, and then I'll be back. Okay, so my uh, gold glaze has dried now, and it's evened out the color and all this, giving it a bit of a shine as well, as you can see. So what I'm going to do next is, and I've already experimented on a piece of scrap paper, first of all, it seems to work, is I have this jar of, what are they called, gilding flakes, I think? Yeah, gilding flakes. Looks like this. Various colors and golds and coppers and bronzes and teals. And... Usually you use a special glue with this, um, but I don't have any of that special glue, but I've got this glue. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a little of this glue, I'm going to spread it out in a couple of areas on this flap. Open up my gilding flakes. I'm going to take my finger first of all and I'm just going to rub it around so it kind of spreads it out. I don't want a big clump of it just so it's, it's spread out thin enough that's almost starting to uh, dry right now. It's getting tacky. That's what I want. And then I take some of this and I just Pat it down into that area, and I'm not too concerned about this being um, solid. And I've got a piece of uh, newsprint underneath to catch the pieces that will come off of this. The one thing I don't like about using this stuff, it's, it's kind of a messy uh, process. I'm 
business making sure all the areas where I've put glue I'm getting some of this stuck into it and then I'm just going to take my hands my fingers and just gently rub off the loose bits and then I'm just rubbing around getting all the loose bits off and that's given me a little bit of sparkle here so you see how easily it blows around and I'm going to do that on the other flap over here I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to try to vary where I'm putting this this time I think this is sticking quite as well as the one that I made. Maybe I spread my glue a little too thin. But that's okay. I can always add more. I will add a little bit more down in here. tapping it down good before I start to okay so I got a little bit more down there I think that's all I'm going to put on it. I just want to see how that would work. It's bound to get uh, covered up here as I work on this, but I had them. I thought I'd give them a try. I haven't used them in quite a while. And to be honest, I don't really care for them. Uh, maybe if I had the right glue, it would be better. Just taking off the excess that's here. And as far as cleaning up all these bits, they seem to have some glue stuck in them, so I don't think I'll put those back in the container. I think I'll just clean it up. And look, call me Goldfinger. James Bond reference there, if you're not sure. Okay, or you may not be old enough to remember Goldfinger. Okay, so I'm going to clean this mess up and come back and we'll see what we're going to do next. 
So I think I want to add a little bit more texture to this page. So I've got out the Iridescent Glaze by Vicky, Vicky uh, Booten. And uh, she claims, and I have tried this, that you can colorize this if you mix it with other things. So I've got some perfect pearls out because I still want to go for some shine. And I've got this uh, blue raspberry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of this out. I'm going to use this little Harlequin uh, stencil. And I'm going to add a little bit of texture right about here. And I, double, I sprayed this with repositionable spray uh, because this is a very soft um, texture like pa uh, paste. She calls it a glaze. Um, so I'm going to get that and take my perfect pearls right here and I'm just going to take out and put this in an area where you can see it here. I'm just going to take out, I don't know if this is too much, too little, we'll soon find out. And then take out some of this, not maybe too much. I'm just going to mix the two together. So my theory is I will keep the shimmer and at the same time tint it. So I've got sort of a blue silver happening here, which is kind of pretty. And do I want more? No, I think that's enough. I'll just make sure this is mixed right in because it is a powder. The Perfect Pearls is a powder. I think it's mica powder. Just want to make sure it's all dissolved in there. There, I think that's pretty good. And I'm just going to spread it through my stencil. And I'm not going to be too concerned about getting every area of the stencil. Just interested in putting a little bit of texture to my page. Okay, let's take this up. Well, that's kind of neat. I think I'll put a little over here. I might have to make up some more of it. Let's see if I can stretch this. how we did. Mm, got a little mucky, but that's okay. Uh, do I want to put this anywhere else? Maybe I should put a little on flaps here, but I have to make up some more. So I think actually I, this one I made a little bit darker than the other one, but that's okay. Here, I'll move this over so you can see. Now, I may be getting some of this under the stencil because the stencil is kind of raised up here. But if I have, that's not going to bother me. Yeah, I did a little bit, but that's okay. 
just interested in texture. Now I want to get this into water and get this washed off and then I'm going to hit this with the heat gun. Okay, so my glaze paste is now fairly dry. It's still a little tacky, so I need to be careful. But it's pretty good. I hit it with the heat gun. I do notice with the heat gun, it, it doesn't, it still takes quite a bit of time. Actually, I'm feeling heat from this. It absorbs the heat too as well. So that's interesting. But it's dry enough to work with. So I'm thinking this background needs some script. I love script on backgrounds. I use it on a lot of things. So I've got this particular stamp, and this comes from what is it? Um, it comes from this collection by Stampers Anonymous, and it's uh, Ledger Script CMS two four one. I really love this set. And I'm not going to put it on an acrylic block because I'm going to do this just freehand. And I'm using archival ink because when it's dry, it's water fast, and I'll probably be putting more wet medium on this when I come to my images. And I'm just putting it down, pressing it in, and that's pretty good. Not too concerned about how crisp the image is. It's again just to add another layer of texture. And as usual, I have forgotten to put on more of my invisible gloves, my little barrier cream that um, keeps stuff from sticking to my hands, especially like black ink. I always forget to do that. Okay. And I might put some down here on these flaps. Now they're a little bit tricky because there's no support underneath of them, but I guess there's enough flex. And I should probably do a little, but I think I should just first heat set this, these. They'll dry on their own without any problem, but I like to heat set them. Should be good. And I'm just going to flip these over and put a little bit uh, on here. I'll give that a little bit of a heat set as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go and clean my stamp off and decide what next element I'm putting on this. All of these layers are building up the background. Until I get to enough of a background, then I'll start covering it up with my images. That's the way it works with mixed media. Okay, so I had a little boo-boo. When I folded this over and stamped and then dried it, this, I forgot about, was not completely dry. So it stuck in a few places. Actually, not even where those were. It was something else. But it stuck and it pulled up some of the paper here and there. But I don't care because that's going to get covered up anyways. I think the next layer I'm going to put on is I'm going to play with some washi tape. So I've got uh, three washi tapes that are in my color scheme. And I'm going to put these on. Now... I sort of want there to be a connection between the flaps and um, the main page. 
So I'm going to use this washi tape to sort of unify that. And I'm just tearing the washi tape off. I'm not um, concerned about the um, evenness of it. And I might put a little bit down the side as well. Okay, so I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to varnish this tape down because washi tape is notorious for not sticking all that well. I mean, that's the beauty of it. You can peel it up and remove it to, or move it to another spot if you didn't get in the right place. But on the other hand, you don't want it coming off when you finish the page. Now. I will probably go over this at some point. Well, there's going to be other things on here, and there'll be some matte medium, so that will probably seal it down. Make sure that in my crease that it's folding okay. Okay, and that just adds a little bit more texture to my page. Do I need anything else? I got a lot of stuff on here. Um, question is, do I need anything more? Well, I'm wondering if I need to give a little bit of shadowing in around by the washi tape. And I could do that with a pit pen. So if I get out my black pit pen, or maybe brown, maybe black's a little bit wet. Let's try the brown. Now the pit pens are made with India ink. So they, um, you can f move the move it around a little bit, and I don't think the brown is going to be. Well, maybe. wasn't really what I originally had in mind, but might be okay. Well, it's kind of subtle, but just a little bit of shadow there. Okay, I think I should hit this whole thing with the heat dry again. And, oh, one other thing that I think I want to do. I think I want to go around the edges of all of this with uh, an archival ink. So I'm just going to grab my sepia archival ink again. This one is waterproof when it dries. And I'm just giving the edges of my pages a little bit of a shadow just to give a little bit more dimension. You can see how careful I'm being putting this on. I'm not. Actually, on the gold pieces, this uh, sepia is almost looking like bronze. 
which is kind of interesting and I kind of like. going to go around and add a little bit more making the border a little bit wider because I'm, I'm liking the effect this the sepia on the gold that's on the page is actually turning to almost a coppery look and I kind of like that okay and we should do this side as well it's the thing when you've got these little inclusions kind of tend to forget that you have two sides to them. Now I think it's time to hit it with the heat gun for one last blast and then uh, get out my little pieces and decide on how they're going to be arranged. Okay, so now I'm going to collage my pieces down on this and I'm not sure what I want to do. I am thinking, I have a lot of flower pieces, so I'm sort of thinking I might collage some flower pieces onto uh, the side panels to make it look like, uh, I don't know, it's sort of like you're going into a garden or something. Um, I'm really not sure. upside down maybe something like that and then when you and I'll have them hanging over maybe a little bit more I'm going to cover a lot of uh, the stuff I put on this but that's okay it's, that's I warned you about that that when you do collage a lot of things get uh, cover it over, maybe throw in a butterfly. Butterflies are always nice. I like using butterflies in some of my pieces. Yeah, maybe something like that that looks makes it look kind of lush and then when we open it up we have uh, whatever I'm going to have on the inside. Um, what else can I add to this? Let's see. Since I'm doing things with uh, about uh, you know friendship, togetherness, love. Grow dreams. Heart. Yeah, okay. So that would be on my inclusions. So I'm going to glue these down. Now I'm debating, should I use a glue stick or should I use matte medium? I think I'll use a glue stick, but I'll use a collage glue stick. I'll use this, although I've got enough. 
maybe not. I may have to find another stick, and I think I have another one somewhere. Not sure where it is. Let me go and find that, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've done the two flaps, and I ended up using gel matte medium anyways, and I think that was the better choice because it seems to hold them down a little bit better. Um, I'm a little concerned, though, now that I have these two flaps like this, that when I open it up, of course, you can see the edge, and I really don't want to cut those off. I like them protruding, so I'll see what I can do. I may just um, use some ink on them, colorize them, whatever, when I get to that point. But on the inside, now, I want to keep the garden idea and with my people going. So what I'm thinking of doing is going from about a third of the way up a little or towards the halfway mark going across here with all of my couples then doing flowers along the bottom and then a row of like butterflies coming out of them. So that's my idea so let's see what happens. I have these characters and they'll probably be duplicates of some of these evil twins over here. This one's a little bigger one. Maybe put it more towards that way. Do I have another one that's that size? These are a little bigger. I'll put them there. These ones here. This one's there. Um, as I said, I may be duplicating some of these. And that's okay if I do. Uh, I've got those. I've used these guys before, but I'll put them over here. Um, got this triplet thing happening. Maybe, let's see, maybe I'll move this one a little bit closer in here. These ones down here. Doesn't have to be completely symmetrical. And use them, use them. Hmm, let's see. Well, there's nothing saying I can't separate some of these. They're kind of big. Why don't I uh, cut out these two little guys. And of course that makes him look like he's deformed. Okay, that does not work on him, but it will work on the other guy, so we'll just... Go there, maybe move everybody over just a hair. I want there to be some overlap. ones over a little bit. Okay, I think I need one more little body there. Where's my little girl? And she can go under there. Okay, and then I think there should be a garden underneath all of these. I don't know why the whole thing with um, that poem or that book, uh, Secret Garden, is coming into my mind, but it is. Oh, there's a couple of girls. I didn't realize. I know I've used them. Okay. So, let's see. What do I have in small? Flowers are all the uh, same, but I think saying that things have to go exactly. I'm not really sure which way up this one goes. I think it goes this way. The other 
side have those down there and let's see yeah. uh, what else have we got Maybe let that hang out because I've got these white things. This would help disguise those a little bit. Same over here. Just pull that over a little further. And put some of these little purple ones. And I could have a few more. go there to hide that and this could go to hide that but I'm still gonna have the problem on the other side but I'll worry about the other side when I get there and let's see do I have a little something maybe I could cut something here don't really have a lot of small ones Just going down under there. I'm just trying to cover up those white pieces a little bit. Got another one over here. So hmm. and another one of these little purple ones. Go there, peeking out from the flowers. Okay, and then we're going to put in some of our butterflies. So let's see, what have I got for butterflies? Got some orange ones and these darker colored ones. Do I have in here? Well, I did have some smaller people, but that's okay. I'll good with what I've got. Um, Hmm. More to that. Hide some of that stuff, but um, I'm still going to have a problem on the other side, but I'll figure that out. And maybe just a small one down here because I didn't want to cover all that patterning up. I can fool with that when I go to glue them down. This is just to get them situated. I had these way back. I thought these would be nice somewhere. Actually, they may still be nice somewhere. Yeah, how about that? That would be okay there. Now, do I want to fill in bottom sections with a little bit more because I think I found some smaller flowers here. I do. I do have some smaller ones. So um, just adds a little bit more fullness to it. 
have some small butterflies too. Some of those could go in the garden. little butterflies. Here's a little butterfly right here. Maybe more right there. I like butterflies on layouts because they're kind of fun. And one problem I'm going to have is I'm going to have to crease down the middle of these. But I should be able to do that without any problem. Okay. Need any more flowers down? I think I'm going to leave. I think that's it. I think that's all I'm going to put on here. So, then I've got these little tags that have the words on them. So, grow. That might be good right in about there. And part another grow. Oh. Hope blooms eternal. And use friendship, hope, grow, love. I use that. Oh, I don't have the kisses. Kiss and hugs. And bliss. I don't think I use bliss. And then I think what I need is let's clean up some of these. Then I think what I need is a caption or something. So I should pull out my Tim Holtz little sticky words. Um, that's not what they're called, but that's what I'm calling them right now. Got lots of these little pieces. Oops, good. Wipe out everything. I've got these little pieces left over for future projects. And drop them on here. So I had these too. I had all these little tape measure things. Actually, I might leave those out for a minute. They might be good for backing on the words. Okay. I'm going to look at my little words. I'll be right back. Okay, I have all my pieces laid out and there's a lot of things going on here, but that was what I was going for. I added some words up here and I backed them onto one of those uh, measuring tape pieces, uh, the paper ones that I cut out, and I put a little ink around it. This one says, I'm happiest when I'm with you, and I made another one for the other side. Everything has beauty. So now comes the big job, taking this apart I want to edge everything in archival ink, sepia, just to get rid of these little white borders and things. And then I want to glue it all down. And I'm also wondering if I should use any pop dots on this. Of course, this is a book and it's going to make my album kind of thick. So I don't think I will do that. But how am I going to remember where to put all this? Well, I've taken a picture of it and it's on my computer screen. So I will use that as my reference port point. I'm not going to make you sit through me edging this because this is going to take a while, nor the gluing down process. So when I come back, I'll have everything edged and everything glued down. Okay, so I've finished this uh, page with my inclusions and I think it turned out pretty good. It is very busy, but it reminds me sort of a Victorian collage. 
um, with all the flowers and the butterflies and the scary people inside. So here are the outside flaps and you can see that my original shape that I had cut them really can't see it anymore because I let pieces drag over the edge and I said that I was concerned about the white pieces that might show up. Well if you notice you don't really see them now because I just blend them in with uh, some of the sepia archival ink. Uh, the same that I used around the edges. And then when you open it up, you have everybody. Can't get it all in the shot, but there it gives you an idea of what it looks like with the two pages. So all I have left to do is to give this a, a spray with some final fixative. And then when that dries, I'm just going to put some uh, Dorland's wax on it so the pages won't stick together in the journal. And it's done. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, process video and we'll see you for the next art journaling layout.